What's up guys? Hello Shiro Toy Reviews doing another review. This time on something a little bit different. Today I will be reviewing Eco Castle in the Mist by Yuki Miyabe. Um, let me see real quick. Once again, I apologize if there's noise in the background. Um, <laughs> let's see real quick. So here she is, Miyuki Miyabe. Um, let's see any better picture. So I wonder, I'm going to have to Google if she's still alive. Um, but yeah, this is a book, a, novel, a novelization based off Eco, a game that was developed and produced by Team Ico, um, created by, um, I can't remember, I just watched a video about him, um, created by developer name, I'm going to say it wrong, Fueda, Fueda, I can just remember his last name, but Mr. Fueda came up with the idea of Eco and made it to a video game and he has his own studio and very uh, well-known, um, very uh, respected game developer in the world of video games. Um, so this book came out the same year as the game. Um, it came out in 2001. So this book is about, if not, it's almost 20 years old. <laughs> um, so because it's a 20-year-old book, I am going to... Spoilers, everything. Uh, because like I said, this game is, the game is 20 years old. So if you haven't played it yet, I don't know what to tell you. Um... But to go over a brief synopsis of the book, it says a boy with horns marked for death, a girl who sleeps in a cage of iron. The castle in the mist is called for its sacrifice, the horned child born once a generation. When on a single night in his 13th year, Eko's horns grow long and curved, he knows his time has come, but why does the castle in the mist demand this offering? And what will Eko do with the girl imprisoned with within the castle's walls? Dwell into the mysteries of Miyuki Miyabe's grand achievement of the imagination, inspired by the award-winning game for the PlayStation 2. Um, computer Entertainment System, now remastered for PlayStation 3. Okay. Well, since it mentioned... Um, the remaster for the PlayStation 3. Now I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I thought this book was made in 2001, and maybe it was. I'm assuming it. I'm assuming from what I've found, it was. But this could just be a re a reprint. I don't know. So I have to look into that. Um, so I don't think a lot of people know this book exists. Um, but it's a good read. Um, so, of course, since I'm assuming this was written and published before Shadow of the Colossus, Shadow of the Colossus was a game that came that, that Team Ico made after Ico, like some years later, and supposedly the story of that game was supposed to be a prequel to Ico, which means the story of Shadow of the Colossus takes place many, many years before Ico's storyline. Um, so... It's debatable if you want to consider the story in this book canon to the games or what. I consider it like an alternate timeline type of thing, like in comic books. We are um, ignore that. Um, but yeah, so let's see. My my opinions my opinions on the book. Um, I liked it. I liked it. It's a nice alternative. If you never played the game or not in a position to physically get a hold of the game, um, it's a nice alternative to the story. And of course, since it's a, a long page book, has about, let's see, it has 370 pages. So, with that being said, um, you know, the book offers a lot more story than what the game offered. And the game, which became a running theme with the other three games that they made, um, 
Team Ico also made a game, which was their last game, called The Last Guardian, which hopefully isn't the last, very last game they work on. Hopefully they will make more at some point. But, um, yeah. So the book gives you more uh, story, gives you more backstory about Ico and uh, the princess he ends up meeting and helping Yorda and the castle in the mist. Um, Cause yeah, in the game, the game just starts off with Eco being taken to the castle and being put in one of the uh, tombs or whatever to be a sacrifice. And he's left there and he manages to escape and roam the castle. And, you know, you go off from that point. Um, the book starts off with, um, or he a little bit before, well, when he's first born, actually, um, we get introduced to his village that he's from, um, his foster parents who end up raising him. We find out what happened to his real parents. Um, it's very uh, interesting. And like I said, it just adds more storyline for those who were like, man, I wish I knew what happened before the events of the game or you know, that type of thing. Um, but I'm kind of biased. Like like I said, if you look at the book as its own separate thing, um, you know, you can like it and appreciate it for what for what it is. Like I said, it's not, it's not bad. It's like I do like the game. Now that I've read the book, I kind of like the idea of the game being ambiguous and you not knowing a whole lot of what's going on or what happened prior to the events of the game. Um, I kind of like that. I kind of like that element more because, you know, for since, since the game came out in 2001, you know, for years, people have had theories of how Eco and Colossus and Guardian connect together and all that stuff. And, you know, um, the... The creator of these games, Mr. Fueda, um, he intended for that to he intended it for for people to feel that way. Like you make up what how you how you feel the the conclusion of the game or whatever, how it ends or whatever. Like you make your own theory or assumption out of what you know. However, the game ends. You know, and that's that's a cool that's that's cool. You know, it's it's different, it's creative. You know, um, but yeah. So like I said, there's a lot of things added. Like I said, um, Eco's village, his parents, his foster parents, his he had a best friend named Toto, um, who learn about Yorda's past, um, how what state the castle of the mist was in many years earlier um that the castle had citizens and um there was a king of the castle in the mist yorda had a father who was killed by her by his wife the queen her mother um so one big thing is that um excuse me people in Shadow of the Colossus, at the end of the game, we find out that the main character of that game, Wander, was the ancestor of Eco, and you no know, Eco. Um, but since the book, I be like I said, I believe was made before Colossus was de was created, was developed. Um, it kind of retcons that idea that. Eco's ancestor was another person, a person named Azuma, who was from a race of people who were born with horns instead of what Shadow of the Colossus did. And I, I, I like it. It's different. It's creative. I don't know. Like, it, it's creative and it's different, but I guess I kind of like the idea of Wander being Eco's ancestor, you know, than a character we've never seen or heard of before. Um, but from reading the book, Azuma seemed like an interesting and creative 
uh, character. But I do like that. Like, they kind of give their own explanation or origin of, you know, where Eco's, why he was born with horns, where that originated from, all the other uh, children who were born that way, who were sacrificed, and all that, all that stuff. So I do like it. I do like, you know, little things like that that it adds. I do really like. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's it's a solid read. Sometimes it kind of, I felt like the story dragged a little bit. And um, that, that was a little bothersome. And then it would start to pick back up and get more interesting and engaging. I felt like if it... Last, it focused a little too long on Yorda's past, just a little bit. But like I said, it was very interesting. You know, me, I never even even thought to think that she had a had a father. You know that there was a king of the castle in the mist. You know, or even like the citizens that could have you know that lived in the uh, the country or land that the castle was in. Um, all that stuff. So, you know, it's very, uh, like I said, very interesting, creative, kind of like a reimagining of what the game gives you. Um, and I like it from that aspect. So what would I rate this book? Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe like an eight or a seven. Like I said, I like it for being different. I like it for trying to be its own thing and taking ideas from the game and ex extending, expanding it, or, you know, like I said, giving us stuff that was not brought up or was not told in the game story. Um, so I do like it from that aspect. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I recommend it, you know, it took me maybe like two, two months because, you know, I'm busy with other stuff. So, uh, I would try to read at least two or three chapters a night. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a fun experience. Um, would I read it again? Maybe, probably not. Because the story is so fresh in my head, <laughs> no, I wouldn't read, read it anytime soon. But maybe in some years, maybe, you know. Um, but yeah, Eco. So even though I haven't played the game yet, from what I've seen, um, it is something I would love to play one day when I'm able to get a hold of the PlayStation, a copy of the game. Um, but yeah, I recommend the game. Um, I recommend this book. It's a nice, like it's a nice alternative. And you can see it as a collectible because there's not a lot of eco merchandise. It's very, very, very seldom. So yeah. Um, also really quick, I've showed him off before, but, um, this is my custom Mego doll, um, that is inspired by the concept of Eco, like Eco, the, the character. Um, really the only thing that this figure and Eco have in common are the horns, of course. Originally, I was going to try to make him look like have the same outfit as Eco, but that turned out to be a difficult task trying to get the trying to get certain clothing that would match Eco's design. So I just kind of said, "Screw it! I'll just <laughs> excuse me, just do my own thing, but have it be inspired by Eco." Um, so I guess this is Eco in a modern setting with modern clothes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was. Really happy how this turn how this custom turned out. Probably one of my better Migo customs I've made. Um, the horns are um, on here with super glue. I could have maybe centered them a little bit better because um, they do look a little weird at certain angles. Um, of course, I wrapped that green fabric around his uh, head to represent kind of like a headband type of thing. Um, and to hide where I glued the horns. And um, yeah, and I recently, maybe last week, I gave him these gray striped, black striped pants and sneakers. 
because I thought they look cool and appropriate. And since he's supposed to be a kid or preteen, I wanted him to wear something that you know looked like something a kid would wear. But um, he's wielding a reproduction of Mego Thor's hammer, because <laughs> why not? Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm very proud of how this custom turned out, and I might make more versions of this uh, figure. So, who knows? But uh, yeah, that's it for this review. Um, like I said, check the book out if you're interested. Um, as far as next reviews go, uh, I still have my Transformers. I said I was going to review Human Alliance Bumblebee and my KO Defensor, so stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. Peace, you guys.